solving a couple confidence interval problems about a mean with a, a known standard deviation. Problem one, create a 90% confidence interval for a mean from a normal distribution when n equals 20, x bar equals 50, and s equals 8. Answer with one digit after the decimal. So, you know, our question is, should we be using the t distribution or the z distribution, right? We're making a confidence interval for a mean, so now we need to stop and ask, which distribution are we using? We'll be using the t table or distribution, since sigma is unknown, but we do have a normal distribution. This means that we want to use x bar plus or minus t alpha over 2 times s over the square root of n, Right? We don't have sigma, but we still have a standard deviation. It's just a sample standard deviation. And our critical value is going to come from the t table and not the z table. So to find our critical value, right? this is the only thing we're not given. Everything else was given directly for us in the sentence. 90% confidence interval means 10% for alpha or 0.10. And we don't have to cut it in half. We just go to two tail on the top. Row 19, because we want to go to n minus 1, and we find that t alpha over 2 equals 1.729. So now I'm ready to plug this into my formula, where I'm first doing it with a subtraction, and then I'm doing it with an addition. And then just in case you forgot, when I go to enter that in my calculator, I try to go straight through so I don't have to copy down different parts. So on my calculator, 50 minus 1.729 times 8 divided by the square root of 20 and then just hit equals. And when I do that for the upper and the lower ends, I get a lower value, an upper value, and then I'm ready to answer 46.9 to 53.1 is my standard, D, um, my population mean is somewhere in there. Remember my sample mean of 50, not only should it be somewhere in this range, it should be dead center in the range, but you know, 50 is definitely in there. Problem number two, now use sample size n equals 15 for the prior problem, the one we just did, where we had a 90% confidence interval, n was 20, x bar was 50, and s was 8. And then once we get an answer, let's see how that affected the interval, meaning how did changing the sample size affect the interval. So first we have to solve the problem, and something to notice on this one is not only will we now divide by the square root of 15, our new sample size, not 20, but we will also have to find a new t alpha over 2, a new critical value, because we have a new n, a new sample size. So to find our new critical value, we still have alpha being 10%, so we have 0 0.10, which we'll look at two tail on the top. Now we're going to have to use row 14 to find t alpha over 2 is 1.761. Why did I use row 14? Oh yeah, our new sample size is 15 and 15 minus one is 14 for degrees of freedom. So now I can plug everybody into the formula where I subtract and then the same formula where I add. Enter all of that into my calculator. And when I do that, I can now go ahead and let's also answer with one place to the right of the decimal. So 46.4 to 53.7. So the question was, how did this affect the interval? So when n equaled 20, we got 46.9 to 53.1. So how did our smaller sample size and this answer change? When n equaled 15, we got a slightly larger confidence interval. Wait, so why do I say it's larger? Well, 46.4 is actually a little bit below 46.9, and 53.7 is slightly above 53.7. 
53.1. So what ends up happening, that old confidence interval fits inside of our new confidence interval. So what does that mean? Well, a smaller sample size has more variability. So we need a larger confidence interval to capture the population mean.